The nation of Iceland is truly a land of volcanoes as its landmass contains more than two dozen active volcanoes and is almost completely comprised of volcanic rock. Although volcanoes on the mainland, which have produced large volume explosive eruptions such as Katla or recent effusive eruptions such as Krishavik tend to get the most attention, there are other interesting volcanic systems nearby. One of these volcanoes is referred to as Eldfell, which produced an infamous volcanic eruption on a densely populated island off the southern coast of mainland Iceland in 1973. Its eruption formed a brand new cinder cone, and although destructive, successful countermeasures were employed to divert the flows of lava it produced. The Eldfell volcanic cone is located 113 kilometers southeast of Reykjavik on the island of Jaime. It represents the youngest volcanic vent on an island which formed through the combination of a half dozen separate vents. However, these vents merely represent one island of a much larger volcanic system called Veshmanayar. Veshmanayar consists of islands such as Jaime, Sertse, Helise, and a half dozen submarine vents. These vents are spread out along the northeast trend of activity which represents an area called the Eastern Volcanic Zone. Here, the Eurasian plate is spreading apart from the North American plate. This allows for shallow molten rock in the mantle to intrude into a series of faults and fissures in the crust, eventually erupting onto the surface. The island of Jaime began forming a mere 13,000 years ago when a volume of basaltic magma erupted onto the seafloor at shallow depths of 76 meters or 250 feet. Although some explosive activity occurred due to the interaction of lava with seawater, this was kept at a minimum due to the water pressure at those depths. Over the span of 180 days, half a cubic kilometer of molten rock was erupted. This brought the summit of the volcano to just 10 meters beneath the surface. Then, in 8050 BC, another eruption occurred. Due to the shallow depths this occurred at, magma interacted with seawater which flashed it to steam and generated a series of white and black colored explosions. These explosions occurred in what is termed a Circean-style eruption, ejecting fragments of rock and ash which eventually formed a small volcanic plateau above sea level. By the time the eruption had ended, a several hundred meter wide tuff ring had been constructed, much like seeing a Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai before the island exploded. 500 years later, another less explosive eruption occurred to the east which built a secondary volcanic island. This island contained an ever-growing cinder cone which produced beautiful fountains of lava. Eventually, these two islands merged. In 4550 BC, a new eruption began 4.5 kilometers to the south, which once again formed another volcanic island. It also produced a large tuff ring, whose central crater was eventually smoothed out. In 4270 BC, an explosive eruption formed a brittle island out of ash, but its center eventually exploded, creating a 1 kilometer wide crater. In 3950 BC, the island's most voluminous eruption built a 227 meter or 745 foot tall cinder cone known as Helgefell. Its lava flows greatly expanded the overall volcanic edifice, connecting what were two separate islands. 99% of the island's population lives on land built by this eruption. After a series of earthquakes on the island began in mid-January of 1973, the island's most famous eruption began on January 23rd when a fissure opened up on the northeastern section of the island. Initial activity occurred along the entirety of the fissure, producing fountains of lava, but by eight hours later, almost the entirety of erupted rock was funneled into a single volcanic cone. This cone just happened to be on the eastern edge of the town, which had 5,300 residents. As Strombolian volcanic activity continued, lava flows expanded in all directions, covering hundreds of homes. To prevent the entire town from being wiped out, a novel idea was implied. The residents pumped seawater in lawn hoses from the ocean onto the lava flows in an attempt to cool the advancing flows. This was surprisingly effective, as the outer edge of flows acted as a natural barrier since it was cooler, which diverted molten rock away from the town. By the time the eruption ended five months and five days later, 2.2 square kilometers of land had been added to the island, and a new 200 meter tall volcanic cone had been constructed. It is quite likely there will be another 500 to 1500 years before another volcanic eruption occurs on this island, so the residents who live there should not be too worried about a repeat of Eldfell in their lifetimes. Regardless, and the unlikely event a new eruption was to occur, I recommend that the entire island be evacuated. The chance of another one kilometer wide explosion crater forming underneath the town exists during a future eruption if enough nearby groundwater or seawater was present at the time. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank my new patron Joe Schmuckatelli for supporting this channel.